This lesson will give you an introduction to the PSOC CapSense solution. In its simplest form, CapSense is a replacement technology for mechanical buttons, but it can also be used to create sophisticated user interfaces with linear and radial sliders, touchpads, and even proximity sensing. PSOC implements CapSense with a component that helps you set up an interface without having to become an expert in the underlying technology. Most of the time, all you will need to do is choose the type of widgets you need and let the auto-tuning software, which we call SmartSense, do the rest. The easiest way to get started with CapSense is to try out a few of the example projects. We have generic examples built into PSOC Creator. We also have examples that ship with our kits, which are tailored specifically for that hardware. The example project finder contains a lot of examples on how to use all of the components. You can use the filters to narrow down to just the example projects that you are interested in. In this case, CapSense examples for PSOC 4. You can preview the documentation for the example and the source code for the main function before actually creating the project. This is great when you just want to copy the way a subsystem works in an example project and include it into your project. We are the world's leader in capacitive sensing. Hands down, no doubt. It's an easy and inexpensive way to implement CapSense buttons, and you'll see it on almost all of our kits. The Pioneer kit has a five elements linear slider for high precision control. If you have installed the Pioneer Kit software, you'll see the demos in the start page. If you haven't installed this software yet, you can find it on the kit web page. When you open the CapSense workspace from the example project browser, you'll see that it has a CapSense component and a PWM driving a pair of LEDs. This demo senses your finger position on the slider and changes the duty cycle of the PWM which in turn changes the color of the LED. When you double click on the component, the configure dialog opens up and you can see immediately that we're using SmartSense tuning. Because of that, we can leave all the other parameters at their default values and go straight to setting up the linear slider. The default slider in the example project is already set up. It has five sensors and a resolution of 100. That's the maximum value that the component will return for your finger position. You can see that this panel is where you do the important setup work, choosing the different types of widgets, giving them names, and choosing hysteresis and debounce values. But for our purposes, and in general, the default values will work just fine. Our sensor settings determine how many pins are required for the CapSense component. In the design-wide resources file, the tool has already listed the five pins that we map onto. On the Pioneer kit, these are P11 through P15. There is also a CMOD pin, which should be connected to P42 and provides a modulation capacitance for the CapSense hardware. This capacitor has been described in detail in the component data sheet and in our application notes and is built in automatically on the PSOC 4 Pioneer board. In a fixed function MCU, you would have been required to control the sensing algorithms and determine the sensor activity from your application software. You're required to become an expert in capacitive sensing when all you really want to do is replace a few mechanical buttons or set up a slider. PSOC makes this much easier by generating the APIs that work for the configuration of widgets you chose in the configure dialog. Our APIs let you reset the baseline capacitance on your sensors, initiate scanning, and then get the values from the active widgets without worrying about the underlying technology that makes it all happen. All the scanning sequences, signal to noise ratio calculations, and active widget determination of widget activity, they're all handled in the APIs of PSOC. Looking at the example code, you can see that the CapSense component is started and then the baseline levels for all of the sensors are set. One thing that might trip you up is not enabling the global interrupts before starting the CapSense component. Inside of the main loop, the baselines are repeatedly updated before starting an actual scan. The scan takes a while as the sensors are charged and measured, 
So we put a wait loop in the code here until the scanning is complete. In another application, you might not have the wait loop and you might just check to see if it's done and if it's not done, go on with your program to do other useful work while the CapSense component handles all of that in the background automatically. When the scanning results are available, the linear slider returns a centroid position between 0 and 100, representing where your finger is on the slider. We set those values in the CapSense configure dialog. All the application has to do now is modify the PWM compare value to change the LED color. Notice that the demo also sets the PWM period to be 100, so the slider value does not have to be adjusted before writing the new compare value. Now you should try out some of our examples with CapSense. Once you have the kit example I just showed working, modify it to replace the slider with a couple of buttons. I'd recommend using pins 1-1 and 1-5 as your buttons because they are at opposite ends of the slider. You'll need to configure the component, choose those pins, and then update the firmware. I'll give you a hint to help out. The Git Centroid Pause API is for sliders, and you'll need to replace it with calls to check is widget active to use the sensors as buttons. If you get stuck, Remember to check out this course's resource file, or you can always ask the Cypress developer community for help. In the next section, Mark Saunders, the applications engineer for PSOC Software, will be demonstrating exports to external IDEs, including Kyle MDK, IAR, and Eclipse.